let's go ahead and get started here with our iPhone 6 Plus. Power the unit off first, and then we can start by removing the two pentalobe screws, one on either side of the lightning port down by the home button. With our pentalobe screws removed, we can bring in our suction cup and use it on the front of our display closest to the home button. So we can take a grip of either side of the iPhone and begin pulling our display assembly away from the base of the phone. The aid of your fingernail or possibly a plastic opening tool might assist separating the display assembly from the iPhone. With the display peeled up, you're going to notice a metal protective plate that's covering the four connections for our display assembly. Let's remove the five Phillips screws that are securing this plate so we can get to those connections. Our tweezers is going to make short work of these wafer plugs, disconnecting them and completely separating our display assembly from the base of our phone. Let's now break down the components of our display assembly. Starting with our earpiece speaker and front-facing camera that's secured with a metal backplate here at the top of the display. Removing the three Phillips screws. And then peeling away the front-facing camera, releasing our earpiece speaker first and then carefully maneuvering the rest of our front-facing camera assembly away from the display. Our home button's next, secured here at the bottom of the phone with a metal backplate. Two Phillips screws, and that backplate comes off. A small wafer connection we can release here, and then we can gently peel up the ribbon cable connection, and then the physical home button itself away from the display. The LCD backplate's gonna be next, secured with eight Phillips screws, one on either side of the display. And then three on each of the sides of the display. Let's carefully remove these screws. And before completely removing the back plate, let's carefully peel up the wafer connection here for our home button as it's secured with a little bit of adhesive before lifting the back plate away from the display assembly. Let's bring our attention now back to the base of the phone, starting with the removal of our battery. We have a metal protective plate here securing the connection. Remove the two Phillips screws. Exposing the battery's connector that you can release with your tweezers. And with the iPhone 6 Plus, the batteries used to be equipped with pull tabs at the bottom of the battery to assist with the removal of the adhesive, releasing the battery from the phone. We've previously used our pull tabs to remove the battery already and reinstalled ours with adhesive strips. We're going to show you to heat up the adhesive strips, to soften up the adhesive, and then use a pry tool or the flat side of our spudger to release the battery from our phone. Use a SIM card removal tool or a paper clip to pull the SIM card tray out of the side of the phone. And now let's remove our rear facing camera. Two Phillips screws, one on either side of the camera's back plate. In the other top corner, we have a back plate here for the two connections for our power and volume buttons. Let's remove these two Phillips screws and pull that back plate from the phone. Carefully release the two connections from the motherboard and then remove the three Phillips screws that are securing the antenna in the top left corner. The antenna has a coaxial connection that runs the length of the motherboard. If you disconnect the coaxial plug, the antenna should lift easily from the phone.
let's release our wafer connection down here for our dock port assembly and then the coaxial plug right next to it. We have three Phillips screws here helping secure the vibration motor next to the loudspeaker. Once removed, the vibration motor should be easily maneuvered from the phone. Let's work towards removing our motherboard, starting with the single Phillips screw that's here by the SIM card tray. Another one here in the top left corner. Have one here in the center of the motherboard holding the back plate for the camera flash. And then our two standoffs that requires a flathead screwdriver for removal. With all connections and screws removed, you can slowly bring the motherboard up from the iPhone, but not completely removing it. There is a small connection on the bottom of the motherboard for an antenna that's still locked in the phone. Be sure to disconnect this coaxial connection before removing the motherboard completely. Let's keep track of this small strap that's by the rear facing camera for our reassembly. Remove the last Phillips screw that's securing the loudspeaker. And carefully lift that out. work towards removing the dock port and headphone jack assembly. We've got a total of 11 Phillips screws that we need to remove. Let's keep track of the metal bracket that is secured right on the back of the lightning port for our reassembly. And you're going to notice we're going to use a heat gun or a blow dryer to assist softening up the adhesive, making maneuvering this assembly much easier out of the phone. We've got a small antenna here that's secured into the top of our phones. Single Phillips screw, and this antenna is easily removed. Let's remove our volume button. We've got three Phillips screws that are securing it into the side of the phone. And again, with a little bit of heat, softening up the adhesive, making peeling up the ribbon cable much easier. Let's come over here to our power button assembly. We've got two Phillips screws that are securing the assembly into the side of the phone. And then a third Phillips screw on the back plate for our camera flash. Carefully peel up the ribbon wire, and the assembly is removed. Your iPhone 6 Plus completely disassembled. Let's get started with our reassembly here with our power button into the top right-hand corner of the phone, positioning our camera flash into its housing first, and then securing the button assembly into the side of the phone with two Phillips screws. We have the back plate here for our camera flash. And let's lock that down with a single Phillips screw here at the bottom.
We've got our volume buttons next, positioning them into the opposite side of the phone and securing those down with the three Phillips screws. Next, we'll bring in our dock port, which is a little difficult to maneuver. Let's start over here with the headphone jack assembly, positioning that in first. Then followed by our lightning port, lining that up right into the center. And then securing and lining up the rest of the holes accordingly. Let's not forget the metal bracket that goes just behind the lightning port connector before we secure it completely with all 11 screws. Next, we want to bring the loudspeaker into the bottom corner. Let's start by securing it with the, just this one single screw. The next securing screw is going to require a metal bracket where the coaxial cable runs through. Let's position this in place. Lock that single screw down. And then we're going to revisit this area once we have the motherboard positioned into the phone. Remember, upon removing the motherboard, the connection on the bottom, here's that antenna. Let's connect it now, as it's going to be easier to do so while the motherboard is out of the phone. With the antenna in place, we can now position it down into the phone. And we can now begin securing our motherboard, starting first with the Phillips screw here by the SIM card tray. How about our two standoffs here in the center of the motherboard? Let's remember we need a flathead screwdriver to bring these in. Another Phillips screw just to the left of the back plate for the camera flash. That little strap that we didn't want to lose, that was just to the right of our rear-facing camera. Let's bring that into position and secure it with a single Phillips screw on the bottom of the strap. Let's position our vibrator motor. This is going to take a little maneuvering. We have to be sure that we put in place the metal bracket here for our coaxial connection. Aligning up our screws as well for the vibration motor. 
and make sure that we don't pinch the wire for the coaxial connection while doing so. Once it's all in place, we can secure it with two Phillips screws. Let's secure our wafer connection into the motherboard for the dock port, as well as the coaxial connection that's right next to it. Let's bring in our other antenna into the top left-hand corner of the phone, running its coaxial connection the length of the motherboard, securing it down onto its plug near the standoff, and then the three Phillips screws that are going to secure the antenna into place. If you haven't already done so, let's secure the connections for your power and volume buttons so that we can reinstall the metal back plate with the two Phillips screws over top of it. Let's drop in our rear-facing camera into the housing and secure the wafer connection. Positioning the strap before we bring in the back plate for the camera, securing it down with two Phillips screws. Next, we want to bring our battery back down into the phone. If you haven't already done so, we suggest installing some adhesive strips to secure the battery into place. Secure the connection for the battery into the motherboard and reinstall the protective plate that's secured with the two Phillips screws. We can slide our SIM card tray back in. And now let's reassemble our display assembly, starting with the LCD backplate. Eight screws in total, one on either side, one down by the home button, as well as the earpiece speaker, and then three down each side of the LCD. Before bringing our home button in, we can reposition the wafer connection into its housing and then properly position the home button down into place, securing that wafer connection, and then reinstalling the back plate with the two Phillips screws to secure it. Our front-facing camera and earpiece speaker are going to be next. We can position the sensors for our front-facing camera assembly first, followed by our earpiece speaker, and then the front-facing camera ribbon cable over top the earpiece speaker, positioning the camera back down into its housing. This entire assembly is going to be secured with a metal backplate and three Phillips screws. Our display assembly is complete. Let's now reinstall it onto the base of our phone, positioning our connectors into place. and carefully but firmly locking our connections down into our motherboard. With all four of our connections secured, we can now bring in the protective plate over top, securing it with the five Phillips screws.
and now bring the display assembly down to the phone. Starting at the top, towards the earpiece speaker, you'll notice a series of hooks that we need to hook into the top lip of the phone base before bringing the rest of the screen down flush with the phone. Once you're completely flush, all the way down to the bottom towards the home button, we can now reinstall our two pentalobe screws, one on either side of the lightning port. At this point, we're going to want to power it on and check for full functionality.